folks thanks for checking out the channel again um, so this week's video is the uh, all hallowed van tour now I've got, a, got quite a few problems with this van tour vi video and that is that my van is due a bit of a tidy so I'm gonna have a bit of a tidy first and um, then we can see the wood from the trees but before I do that um, I was just wanted to speak a little bit about my method of working I mean I, I've been a self-employed handyman and multi-tradesman now for nearly 14 years and um, I've had various methods I used to use Excel to to um, to uh, quote with um, and I've always always had uh, my main I would say 60% of my business comes from my uh, advert in the local link magazine this is a trade magazine in, in New York it's got a circulation of 265,000 households so I've had an advert with them for for the entire time the entire 14 years and it brings in a lot of work um, I'd sometimes um, pay extra to do little little Christmas flyers and stuff so everyone in York gets one of these magazines so it, it does bring in a lot and then the first time that I got this magazine there was a bit of a clerical error on their part and they gave me a, a twice the size advert for the same price so which was a bit of a bonus um, so then it, obviously as your reputation grows well I mean before that I was when I first started out I was on um, the old checker trade type platform which was called ratedpeople.com where you uh, householders posted jobs and um, you along with two other tradesmen had to buy the jobs you know sort of eight or ten pounds and then you you put your quote in and you, you were pitted against the other two and so but in the early days of rated people if you lost the job you, you got your money back but then they started to not do that and they started to get greedy and uh, when it went from uh, I, I me and my good lady of the time posted um, a thousand flyers in the area that we lived and I, I got three jobs from it and then the day after I signed on to ratedpeople.com I, I got a job queue so it, it was a bit of a game changer on you know notwithstanding the the fact that you had to buy the jobs etc so after about six months of that I, I felt like I found I didn't need it anymore so I started to build up a reputation and um, getting getting work by word of mouth so which is which has remained and uh, I do get quite a lot of work from word of mouth because I do do a good job and I actually turn up when I say I'm going to turn up but the main um, the main game changer for for my business was um, when I was introduced to Tradeify via PB Plumber I used to watch PB and still do watch PB Plumber um, a great influencer on on um, on YouTube and I I started with Tradeify and it's been an absolute dream come true um, they they're, they're their platform they've got a booking system an email booking system um, and they send reminders text reminders uh, three days before you arrive uh, on the appointment and then and then the morning of the appointment and it just makes you look so professional um, and then the, the, their quoting uh, platform is is really easy. You can log um, often used materials in it in a database. You can save quotes. I mean, I do a lot of things like loft ladders. I've got a loft ladder quote. Just you know, put the customer's details in, fine tune it a little bit. In, within five minutes, you've got a quote. Um, when you send a quote. It uh, sends a text to the customer to remind the customer that they've got a quote. It's just dreamy, it really is. Um, same with in invoices. Um, and then you've got a um, scheduling can calendar. So um, everything is job based, so you have to create a job first. I mean, a lot of Tradeify, I don't, I, I don't use a lot of it. Um, I mean, it's got gas certificates on it. It's got electrical certificates on it. Um, yeah, so you create a job, you associate a job with the, the the quote, and then you then 
uh, go into the calendar, into the scheduler, and um, you know, put put in um, the employee that's going to do the job, which is always me because I'm the I'm a sole trader. Uh, then you put in the times, and it sends uh, a, an email remind an email to the customer saying that you'll be on site at this time. And, and then, as I said before, it then sends reminders. So, you know, for somebody with ADHD like me and, and is, is terrible with dates and times, it, it's a real, a real game changer. So, um, yeah, my, me my method is, um, and I, I do have a website, which I've had some problems with, but when it's working, it works a treat because people ring me up I, I then ask them to go on my website and fill in my customer details form, which then I get an email. So when I get home, I can um, load the new customer details in. So name, address, email, um, you know, text number, and then send send one of these wonderful appointments. And then every uh, I usually have two or three, one or two or three appointments at the end of every day. So on the way home, I go and do a survey and you know try and not not to present a too tired a, a tradesman at the at their door and um i uh, then take the details of the of the survey come home turn that into a quote um the other thing great thing about tradeify is that they've now got this multiple uh, job uh, facility so you, i mean obviously as a as a handyman i do lot several job more than one job in in a in a home and um, so they've got a, the facility where you can you can create multiple jobs with an option to opt in or out uh, in the one quote. So you know they might they might of the six jobs that you've quoted might change their mind on two of them. So they 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 don't select that one, and then they accept the whole quote, um, and then you. Um, then send them a work date um so it's yeah it's absolute game changer um uh so yes thoroughly recommend tradeify and they make you look so professional um so let's have a look at my now new tidied up van so sliding door I use a lot of these bungees, so um, this is the arrangement I've got here. Um, converted um, table, uh, very, very useful, very flexible. Just drops and the legs just drop down and you've got an instant um, working surface. So uh, chop saw, use that a hell of a lot, do a lots of joinery and um, very invaluable. I used to have a much bigger um, DeWalt chop saw, but uh, I had to get rid of it, you know, it was ridiculous. So um, that stays in there. So screws deep down in here. <sighs> these steps handy as hell it took away nicely in there Goes all the way to the back there um, and vertebral table goes in there So this is my main toolbox. So those people that watch my video have seen this toolbox quite a few times. Stanley, Stanley toolbox, um, cantilever, and it's extremely handy for me. 
I'm going to get all my drills and stuff in here. Um, all the power tools in the bottom. Uh, impact driver. Uh, got a multi tool blades there. Uh, multimeter. PTFE. Workhorse does um, it's an SDS drill and and chisel. Uh, uh, wall plugs there. I need some more brown ones in there. Um, ceiling paste. Uh, soil pipe cover. Uh, solvent weld glue using these more and more I mean you know it's, it's a great idea to, to protect your ears because in incrementally your ears can get get damaged uh, lots of squares etc And then all the, hand, all the hand tools in here. Again, this needs to tidy out. Hammers, screwdrivers, levers, plumbing tools, chisels, uh, pipe grips, paintbrush, Allen keys, um, angle grinder blades. What else have we got in here? Um, masonry bits. And then in the middle section I've got um, pipe grips, uh, pipe cutters, plastic pipe cutters, olives, um, silicon profiling tools, SDS drills, um, old style tap, um, box spanners. Electrical tester for mains testing. Uh, what else have we got? Um, that's about it. So I had this racking done uh, in um, a key racking in in Hull, and it cost me fourteen hundred quid, but it was worth every penny. So it's, it's cut on a CNC machine. So all these all these uh, joints are all mortise and tenon, the likes of this. Um, and they're all done on a computer, so I maximise the space and. Uh, it would have taken me a week to do all this and it's really really strong it's bolted into the uh, any previous racking that I've done you know you go over a um, 
you go over a, a speed bump and, and all of a sudden your rack, your van starts to rock and the racking is, has got ripped out. So this is very, very strong. So it includes all these drawers. So I've got all sorts of new screw kits, lots of screw kits. Um, screw caps there, plumbing um, washers and stuff, O-rings, uh, all sorts of stuff in there. What have we got in this one? This one? Tools that won't fit in my um, in my toolbox. Um, what have I got in here? Uh, way goes, yeah, lovely. Way goes, excellent. All goes in there. Those are screw kits. Uh, the lids come off that. That's my string line powder. So then up here, various storage kits, um, screw, screwdriver bits, mini sockets, uh, and a more little mini socket set. So that's my rad, rad key. Draining radiators. Um, using a roll of steel wool to keep that in. Um, tappers for flooring, laminate flooring. Um, it's a back tapper for pulling the, uh, closing the joint when you can't get the hammer close to the wall. Extension lead. Uh, another kit of bolts and nuts and bolts. Here, this is all my wall mounting kit. The picture, picture rail hanging gear. Uh, things for, I do a lot of you know, new move stuff, so moving stuff in, mounting pictures, mounting mirrors, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, little um, D, D cleats for um, mirrors. Of you know, hanging brackets and stuff. And then, right up here, washers and Cable clips. So, uh, on the master guns here, in this section, I've got things like um, spanners. Stuff you don't use every day, but handy to have. Uh, more sockets, drill bits. These are handy for um, 
clamping, you know, mitres when I'm doing wardrobes and stuff, clamping the joint and then pinning it. Handy little clamps. Um, pine knobs. Some weir box spanners. And then higher up I've got cable ties. Right at the top I've got big wipes. I've been using these a lot, these alcohol wipes, these are brilliant. Uh, so then in this corner I've got all sorts. I've got filler up here. I've got pan connectors in here that's my hose bag that's hose a and the hose b is behind it <laughs> and then uh, knee knee pads spare filter for wet vac lots of concrete screws uh, things i don't use that often that hammer brilliant for getting the mortar out of them um, and doing patio remortar jobs uh, Stapler, some hole saws, some filler. Heather bought me this for carrying uh, eight by four sheets. It's quite handy. Um, blazing suckers. Uh, contact. Contact. An aerosol. And just general junk, really, to be honest. These are handy for doing... Um, you're doing, um, you know, canopies, the polycarbonate canopies. You have to cut the cut the soil pipe. Um, packers, all sorts. And then in here, I've got uh, spare batteries. I'm I'm trying to transition from Dewalt to, to Makita, so still have to keep the Dewalt batteries going. So and here I've got whole slows. screws, more hole saws. The, the near ad for changing mixer taps, that's a that's a good earner changing a mixer tap, 75 quid. Takes you 20 minutes. So rear door, this is where the uh, you can see the racking a lot better. It's, uh, it's worth every penny. Um, if you're a busy tradesman, you can't spend, take a week off and do this. It's just too much effort. So a lot of my business is doors, so I've got some, some decent trestles. Um, I've lost the pivot point, so I'm about to use one of my screwdrivers here. So, those are the trestles. I've got my DeWalt um, chop saw stand there. Going from left to right, so we can brush. These mats are brilliant. These are great for so handy as hell. Because when you're in someone's house, you can put one of these mats on on a, on a worktop. Then all of a sudden, it can legitimately become a a um, workbench. Um, you know, without possibly damaging it. Um, and when, you, when you're putting drop sheets down, if you're on laminate especially, you're going to be skiddy, so you put one of these on top and, and, it, and, it, and it, it stops you from slipping. Mm -hmm. 
So this is my main power tool drawer, full extension drawer. It'll come out, come out 900. So I've got my um, track saw, the main stalwart of my business. So doing doors and uh, cutting sheets of MDF for bespoke wardrobes, etc. Um, battery battery um, um, circular saw. First fix, second fix nail gun, first fix nail gun. Um, nine inch angle grinder and belt sander. So all that goes, tucks away nicely. So, top drawer is plumbing stuff. So that's uh, flexes, um, waist, uh, immersion thing, I'll hardly ever use that, I've only ever used that once. Um, so that's that one. Plumbing again, all um, compression and um, push fit and solvent weld stuff. I mean, there is, a, there is a school of thought that you know you, you every van's got a finite amount of space in it. So you know, some people say let let the let the merchant store it, but you do have to have some stock. So it's a, it's a fine balance um, between your available space and your convenience of, of having it in your van. Uh, long drills for coring through walls, etc. So we've got uh, stair rod um, for securing um, stair drop sheets, um, standard plumbing plunger, Stabila laser, uh, 600, 1200 and 1800 levels. Um, and these are the, where I keep my tracks. A long track and short track. So up here we've got uh, additional battery power tools. Circular saw, planer, two two different angle grinders, and recip saw. And we've got a jig tech installation kit here. Drop sheets. Um, now I put this in recently for three meter lengths of of pipe. Um, so yeah, it needs to tidy out. So, uh, mastics in these in these new containers. I've just got those. So we've got um, extractor, dust extractor for using track saw, um, wet back, Makita wet back. I just got that Harrogate show. Absolutely game changing. Um, Bosch table saw, another game changing um, power tool. Gives you total flexibility on site. Uh, this fan, I use these for bathrooms. First job in a bath new bathroom is to set this up, pointing out the window, and it sucks all the dust out. Uh, um, absolutely a must have item. Um, 
So up here, I've been, I use a lot of these uh, magnetic things. Great for storing, you know, like storing stuff like that. It just keeps it handy. Up there. So, and now this is where it starts to get chaotic because this stuff's just everywhere. Um, and there's no rhyme or reason. I mean, the, the main thing with um, being a handyman is that I cover a, three or four different trays. So I, you know, let's just say if I was just a plumber, I'd have a small, I'd have, I wouldn't need this big van. So um, I've got to cover most of the trades. So um, hence need the space. So for, for instance, like I've got this tile cutter, uh, brilliant Sigma tile cutter, absolutely brilliant. Uh, with, with the uh, diamond cutter there. Uh, and then these are all these, the other, box power tools, pipe cutter, um, coring drill, um, press fit fittings, in here, let's have a look at these shiny little beasts all in there, um, and then more plumbing stuff underneath, I hardly ever use that, um, so then we've got press tool, uh, mortising jig for doors uh not sure what that is and then all these so i've got shims i've got poly plumb fit pipe fittings shims pipe clips compression fittings all sorts in there uh, i've got paddle mixer for tiling it etc got craig jig stuff uh, and I've got this beast Is an absolute beast. Get it out. This angle drill. And when you're doing bathrooms, you know if you want, it, if you've got to put a 42 mil pipe through a 40 mil pipe through uh, a joist, you need a drill like this, like 400 quid's worth, and like a battery is 120 quid. But you can't avoid it. You've got to have it, and then you hardly ever use it. is there. Uh, see all this stuff I really hinges use a lot of these hinges for um, uh, wardrobes and stuff and then I thought I'd have these on these metal clips here just to, so I'd be able to see what's in them because if you can't see something you, 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 you don't know you've got it. These electrical electrical gear there uh, and then endless uh, what do they call it? Um, solvent weld fittings. Old bits of grout, which you know I'm going to throw away. Um, jig, uh, Craig jig that goes up there, but it keeps falling down. And then it's, it's, bought that for a bathroom, didn't use it, so I thought I'd use it in the van. Uh, and then I've got these things. These are quite handy. Uh, so I've got screws and um, shelf support, um, tile backing board, washers, uh, all sorts of things. And then I've got this problem. You know, that's a problem. So you know, hook, hooks and stuff for picture rail, multi tool blades. All sorts of gear. I can't. I can't. A lot of that I can't use. Uh, stand for uh, table saw. So, and then I've got all these full-length compartments here for for pipe patterns and trim. Uh, This is going to use us a lot, so I've got this with ang angle cuts on here, so that you push that into there, it, it holds it certain, holds it steady. Um, Grout and float, uh, and then we've got all my aerosols in here. Uh, framing square, 
my magnets and all my screws. So I hope that um, van tour was okay for you. Well, as I say, I was a little bit hurried and um, the van is in a, in a little bit of a state. But that's the mechanics of um, the things that I need to be a handyman. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about what it actually is uh, for me to be a handyman. Um, I, I always feel like I'm a, in a position that I'm a very lucky man to be able to be invited into someone's home and uh, you get to see how they live and um it's a sort of privileged position because um you know and you're all you and you're there because of the skills that you've got so um it's a sort of um a little a little wristbanding ticket that gets gets you in and um um you, then you get then get to see how people live and um what i find is if it's a family you after a first hour, they, they, they get used to you, and then they start to relax, and then, and then they start to be themselves, and it's a, and it's as if you are another family member, you know. And it's, it's very interesting. I remember once I, was, I did seven oak doors in a in a house, and the grandfather was visiting, um, so they had two two sort of teenage kids, and um, the last door I did was in the living room, so it was about sort of four past four, and um, they were all watching. Uh, quiz games and I was fitting the door it was a most bizarre scenario and in, in the end I started answering the questions along with the family <laughs> um, you know and, and it didn't seem unnatural um, so you know there are lots of opportunities to I mean I, like, I quite like people and um, I quite like meeting people and um, uh, unless they're a knob then I don't like them. Um, but uh, I remember another guy, I, I worked for this elderly gentleman and I had to um, r repair, he had a 15 pane glass front door, glazed front door. And one of the, uh, the police had smashed the front door. He'd been in hospital, this fella. And uh, while he was in hospital, the neighbors were concerned that they hadn't seen him. So they called the police and the police said that they checked their hospitals. Uh, but there was no sign of him, so they smashed the window. Anyway, when he came back from hospital, he was livid <laughs> that his window had been smashed to the extent where he called the he called the pr press, the evening press, and um, there was a big article. He showed me it. You know, man was indignant that the police smashed his window. Blah blah. Anyway, so I set to to um, fit in this new um, glazed panel, and as I opened the door, it banged on something. So. I took a step into the living room and I, and I looked right behind the door and there was a double bed behind the door with a 50 year old woman in this bed reading a magazine. It was most bizarre. So, uh, and throughout the entire time I was there, she never spoke to me. And um, eventually the, the irascible um, customer explained to me that she was his girlfriend and they'd met when he was 40 and she was 16 or something. Um, so, and she was like in a nighty and stuff, you know, it was a, it was the most um, unnatural working environment. <laughs> um, so you do meet some some crazy people. You you also meet some very courageous people. Um, one of the most emotional jobs I ever did was um, for working for a family who had um, a 32 year old Down syndrome lad. And um, they lived in a in a in a place with a they had an open uh, di dining room living room and a, and a sort of kitchen and it was open, so the, the the lad had taken to coming in while they were cooking and sort of um, you know lifting pots of boiling water etc. So they wanted so the job was to make some doors. So I made these um, swing doors like saloon doors like uh, you know Western saloon doors with um, um, you, you know. Uh, restaurant kitchen hinges that flap both ways and um, I managed to make them in the style of some some of the furniture that was in the room and, uh, and then I had to fashion a lock uh, so I, I made this sort of hook over timber latch that had a pin in it for extra security anyway it, it all worked well and I, I when I gathered the the, the parents and, and they, they worked they, they, just, they just suddenly decided to give it the thumbs up and, and then I could see them it's making me emotional thinking about it. I could see them, um, just see that it made a massive difference to, to their to their work, their their living environment. Um, you know, 
I, I actually sort of floated home. That, that you know, my skills had made a difference to these people. It was, it was a, gr a great privilege. It really was. Um, so, yeah, to be a handyman, it's uh, it's a wonderful thing. Um, you know, earning a living from your skills um, and making a difference to people's lives is is um, is a great great thing. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.